Welcome back, this is Titan Gaming, and today we will be playing Stellaris, which is an RTS slash civilization esque building game. Um, I will be explaining more as we get into the game, but for right now, um, I just want to t t uh, talk to you a bit about what this tutorial is going to be about. Um, first of all, it's going to be geared more towards the um, beginner slash newer players, um, but more experienced players are welcome because I'm I my, uh, I myself am not that good at this game, so I'm, I'll welcome any feedback. Uh, so yeah, because I'm not the greatest player, I have about 107 hours prior to this game, so I do know how it works uh, and how to play. For those of you who are more experienced and maybe know a little bit more about the game. I am using the Utopia DLC. If you're newer, don't worry too much about that. I'll be explaining as I get to where the DLC is actually involved. Um, as of right now, I'm not exactly sure exactly what everything is in the Utopia DLC, but I will definitely be doing some research and making sure I give you all the right information. Without further ado, let's get started. Um, first things first, we're going to create a new game. And as soon as you load in, you can notice that there's a lot of... Um, ignore all these. These are all the ones I've created. Uh, there's a lot of starting um, civilizations. These are great if you uh, maybe like a few of these. But typically, most players will just create their own because that's the more interesting feature. I'll be going more towards this Titan Corporation. but. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of things here that are very confusing, and I will be talking about them as I create a new civilization. First things first, we'll be going into the first tab, which is the appearance. So basically, you get to decide, okay, what does my civilization look like? There's humanoid. Um, so yeah, maybe this one might be seem, seem pretty interesting, but so does this one. Um, there's mammalian, or mamma am I saying that right? Mammalian? Yeah. I guess, and they have some pretty nice looking guys here. Uh, this, this one might be fun to play. Uh, there's a reptilian, which uh, also some pretty look good, interesting characters. This is really Avatar. This isn't really much of gonna actually impact gameplay, but uh, it's just kind of a fun little quirk. Um, uh, avian, anthropod. This one is come. A few of these uh, aren't actually in your. Um, basic game. Some of these are part of the free content portraits, and this is one of them. I might play as this guy, but we'll see. Uh, this is also a, part, a one, which it looks kind of like a Hydra, and I kind of think that's pretty cool. There's also Fungoid. I think this is actually new. I've never seen this one before. It looks kind of creepy. I don't think I'm going to do that guy. I think I might do a humanoid or something. Something human-esque, like one of these guys, maybe? Yeah, let's do this guy. This guy looks very uh, serious, very much like me. Um, the species name I'm going to call Titan, obviously, and it's going to be Titans, and the adjective is going to be Titan, which is pretty clever that you can just hit that and it does it. Uh, they do give you randomized, um, you know, randomized names if you really so choose. So you can just hit random and it gives you all the stuff. Zadrin, Retherian, but you can also just provide your own. I'm just Again, gonna go with Titan. Titan, not Titans. Oops, whoa. Titan. Titans. And the adjective would just be Titan. Okay, next. Um, now we're gonna pick some names. These are pretty important because it's typically about your fleet, your planets, your ships. You can change your all these if you really want to manually as you use them, but honestly, that's a lot of work and I mean, I, the only thing I really truly change is the fleet names because that's the only thing I care about uh, just because it, it keeps me organized ship names, these are like your um, your science ships and your construction ships which I'll explain more as when we get into the game uh, so you can kind of read through these and kind of decide, oh, the Millennial th Fleet seems pretty cool, or the Strike Force Dragon, Strike Force, I usually do this one because I like the Strike Force stuff that's always pretty cool to me um, they also like name them after like some Greek there's some Greek things in here like uh, the Hesper Hesperides and Rhea stuff like that so I'm going to pick uh, the Humanoid 4 now traits, traits are very important they help 
um, kind of give you some buffs in terms of um, engineering output. Just they kind of give you like abilities, except not really abilities isn't the right kind of word because you don't get a. It's not. It's 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 kind of like an, an edge to um, what your civilization do, does best. Um, so like intelligent, you get ten percent output in engineering, physics, and society, which is really good because it means it increases your research. I typically do this because I like to get research done. Research is the thing I really focus on, especially early game. Um, early game, I focus on uh, unity and intel, uh, not real, sorry, let me start over. Intelligence, uh, sorry, research and um, minerals are, and resources are the first things I try and get done. Uh, as soon as possible because if you have a good strong research and a really good strong um, mineral output uh, building ships is really easy because there's a maintenance cost and if you have a high enough energy and mineral output then it's best then ma maintaining ships is really easy so it helps output them when you really need them if you don't understand everything I said don't worry I'll be again going over this when we actually start the game so the few traits that I really like are intelligence because that gives me better output. It also increases slightly the chance of getting better scientists in terms of faster researchers. They're like like intelligent, or sorry, there's like genius and maniacal, I think. Uh, and each gives you a 5% or a 10% increase in your research, depending on where you put them. And those guys are really important. Also, I put rapid breeders, which increases the um, population growth. This is really important um, if you want to uh, have, get a lot of... And when you make new colonies, which, again, don't have to worry too much about it, but if you want, uh, rapid breeders is, is very self-explanatory in a way that it basically just means that they make more babies really fast, and as long as you have enough food, it should be fine. Um, I also go for, I think, Strong, which increases your minerals uh, by 5% and your army damage. Wait, army damage? Not military damage. Wait a second. Interesting. So that's just minerals. Interesting. There's two different types. There's ships, a ship, um... There's ships and there's an army, and they're two different things. Yeah, so this increases the strength, but it does give you extra minerals, which is not bad. I might grab one of these natural engineers or something. I can only grab one more, because as you can see, I have a negative one and I have a three. So that means I need a negative trait like uh sedentary to balance it out to zero. This needs to be zero, zero. So for me to balance it out, I can get one and a positive one and a negative one. So like I can get fleeting. These are typically the two things I get, which is leader lifespan by minus 10 years, which you can kind of fix as you go on, and sedentary, which just decreases their migration speed and resettlement cost, which I don't mind because I don't really like the migration speed. Uh, resettlement might be helpful when you're taking stuff over, but not it's not really used. Um, in that case, I have one more that I can use for one. So I can use strong for five percent minerals, which I usually do. I usually do these these. This is usually my setup. But now that I think about it, I'm not sure if I want to do five percent extra minerals, or if I want to do something else like talented or quick learners. Or communal, charismatic, conformists, resilience, conservationists, which doesn't seem very useful. That doesn't seem very useful. That doesn't seem very useful. That doesn't seem very useful. That, that might be pretty useful. And we're just going to do strong, which will increase your mineral output, which is pretty nice, especially in the, in the start game when you make a little extra minerals. Moving on is to my ruler. You can decide the sex, which it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to go for male because 
why not? Let's give him a random name. Uh, Felix Wolf. Uh, yeah, let's just call him. Why not? Uh, title. This doesn't really matter. Um, color variance is basically just the color of the skin. Again, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to keep them blue. Clothes. Something nice looking. Fancy. That kind of looks fancy. Yeah, let's stick with that. Room. Let's, let's do something nice and... Ooh, that looks nice. Something nice and uh, techy. Because I'm a very intelligent slash strong whatever so um, I guess that's very uh, fancy it's very warlike it's kind of techy it's kind of techy I think I like the other one this one because it has like a little map for the background I kind of like that so I'm gonna keep this uh, this is all just purely aesthetic it's not really doing much again this this is also kind of aesthetic I mean, I'm going to call this Titan Prime, I'll call this Titan uh, Type, it typically doesn't really matter, it's just like, you know, you get to decide what kind of planet you like, you can go dry, which is arid, you can do savannah. I typically do tundra. I tried doing alpine, and I found less planets in alpine, so I'm gonna t do tundra. Uh, this is again just preference. A, a lot of times AI do like dry or wet or frozen. Um, so, you know, wet you can have a these three types of planets pretty well. Uh, tundra these, dry a uh, savanna these again, but vice versa kind of. Um, like sixty percent. 60% it, it's so it's like these these types of planets you can colonize these types of planet if you were doing this type of planet you can colonize if you do this type of planet these are the three types you can colonize so it's just kind of which one do you want I typically do tundra just because there's just the one I usually go for I don't know it's doesn't really play a big role in it um let's see this is like again all aesthetics. You don't really notice this much, but I, uh, I just look for the one that looks most sciencey. This one looks kind of fun, and this one looks kind of fun. But I think I'm gonna do avian, even though I could do. What did I do? I did reptilian, so I could have done this one, but uh, avian looks nicer because of the bridge. Okay. Now, this is government and ethics. Basically, this gets to um, kind of to make give you some boosts depending on your government. Um, what these things are are your ethics. So you get to pick a strong one, or you can do three of them. You can do any kind of combinations. So you can do three of these guys and none of these extreme ones, and they each give you kind of like a little buff. Um, Fanatic materials give you plus 10 research speed, which is pretty important uh, if you want to do science and minus 20% robot maintenance. That's pretty nice. You can use full AI rights, which is awesome because it means you don't get an AI uprising later in the game. Uh, fanatic pacifists, you get more unity and you get control of more sectors in um, at the beginning, which is pretty nice because uh, a sect. Uh, Oh, so core sector systems. That means you, you, you can only ca uh, call. You have a cap basically of how many planets you can control at once. Otherwise, they have to go into a sector. What this does is it increases the amount of planets that you can colonize and be under your direct control, as opposed to being basically um, controlled by a sector. Which I will again. Don't worry. I will explain later. Next, we have fanatic xenophile. Um, which increases your trust growth and decreases di diplomatic um, influence. Typically, this is um, fan fan uh, xenophile is a good thing. It means you like new uh, meeting new people. Uh, not such a bad thing. Just kind of a little, you know, a little hard. Um, 
Yeah, so there's two degrees of it. So there's like fanatic and then there's just normal and each one depends. So it's like strength. Uh, you can have a, a really big one or like a big buff or a little buff, but you can't have both. You can't do like this. You can only pick one or the other. Um, you have three and each one costs a certain amount. Fanatic costs two. Uh, normal ones cost one, so you can have like three of these guys, for an example. Um, funny enough, you can't do opposites because they contradict each other. Um, and then, depending on what you pick here, allows you to pick some civics, which also buff your thing. Um, so you can do like mining guilds and synthetic evolution here. If you did demo democratic, this also affects what civics you can do. Um, you can do. I'll go back to explaining this in a second because this will be shorter. So you can do Imperial, which means you just have one ruler and when he dies, the next one becomes the new ruler. Dictator, which basically you hold an election upon the ruler's death. Oligarch, which means you hold an election every 40, 50 years. And then Democratic is every 10 years. And each one gives different stuff. Moving on to Fanatic Authoritarian, which basically uh, decreases slave unrest if you decide you want to have slaves, which you can do. Uh, if you really want to. Uh, they do have certain buffs in some things, but can't do other things. Um, uh, resettlement costs also decrease, so it's easier to move um, populations around between your planets. Fanatic spiral, spiral, spiritualists can uh, uh, decrease in unrest and, de and increase in governing ethics attraction, which basically just means people um, are more likely to flock to your um, religion kind of thing, your, your, your civilization. Um, and as you can see, you can like research psychonic technologies, temples, and outlaw AI. So you can't have AI, but you can't have AI in here. Fanatic Miratalists um, increase army damage and fire rate, so your ships get a buff and your army gets a buff. Fanatic xenophobe is the opposite of xenophile, so you hate zombies. You hate zombies. You hate other people. Um, uh, basically, this means you get more influence, which again I'll speak later, and you also get a bigger uh, border range, which it could be nice if you like to have big borders. Um, but it does come with some restrictions, mainly a decrease in opinion of other species. So if you're a xenophobe, not many other civilizations will like you, unless they're also xenophobe. Then they will like you, because you kind of have the shit, your shared belief. Wow, this is almost 20 minutes of just explaining. Okay, and moving on, fanatic egalitarian is um, increase in faction influence. So if you're in a faction, you get more influence, and if a decrease in consumer goods cost okay fair enough and then of course there's a hive mind which comes with the utopia um, the DLC and it basically just means that there's no happiness you get a bunch of little buffs in growth speed habitability monthly unity and monthly influence which is it's pretty good um, I'm not gonna do this because I kinda wanna do this and this and I wanna be a oligarch and I want corporate domination and mining guilds. So what this does, so first of all, I get two extra core systems to start out with, which is nice if I wanna rapidly uh, increase my borders, because I wanna start with one system and I want as many systems as I can, um, which is great. I also want robots, so a decrease in maintenance cost is pretty nice, and an increase in research speed, because obviously I'm trying to get into the early science. I wanna get ahead in science as fast as I can. Um, this is so I can, um, yeah, it's just make more allies. Especially, it's really helpful when um, you can increase people's opinion by offering trade, and one of those is a research agreement. If you offer to research, uh, if you're far enough ahead and uh, offer them a research agreement, they're more likely to give like you, and you can create factions and stuff like that. I chose an oligarch because then I can do corporate domination, a uh, dominion, sorry, which increases my energy generation by 10%, and mining guilds, which increase my mineral production by 10%. So I get a lot of um, buffs on my minerals and my energies, sorry, minerals and energies, which should help. Um, maybe not early game, but maybe later game. Early game, it doesn't impact much because you don't get a lot to start out with. Empire name Titan Enterprises. Corporate Alliance, yeah, let's do that, why not? 
color scheme, I think I'm just going to stick with this. Actually, that kind of looks cool. How can I incorporate that? Uh, pirate, Paradox. There's a lot of things you can pick from. This, this is always fun to play with. Uh, something science-y, I guess. That's militaristic. That's interesting. Oh, that one's pretty good. It's kind of a corporation. This is kind of, uh, yeah, that will work. Dom domination. Let's do a pointy or a round one. No, not a round one. This is pretty hard to pick, guys. Um, not really reptilian. Sorry, avian. Let's do this one. This one looks kind of fun. Yeah, let's do this one. Why not? Or, that would be kind of cool. Well, let's just do this one. This one's pretty nice looking. Okay, so then you have your starting weapons. Starting weapons, they're really not that much different. Energy, they're more... They do less damage, but typically they're more accurate. Um, project uh, projectile weapons are slow to reload but um, are very fast and they don't have a lot of range they have a oh sorry I'm just, I should just read this instead of making stuff up um, they flying speed but they're limited in range so they don't have a high range and their kinetic energy and high fire chew through shields with ease so they're good for shields energy weapons um, they're effective at medium to close range but can't do long range Missile weapons are typically just what I'd go for because they have excellent range, but they're vulnerable to interception by point defense systems. Typically, you don't have point defense systems early game, so typically, two, sorry, two typically in a row. So usually, this is a good uh, bet for starting games, and then you can actually unlock these guys later. Um, warp travel creates little lanes that you can go through. Uh, hyperspace. Um, is kind of you you have to jump from one point to another and then wormholes you build wormholes and you get a, a circle I'm gonna do wormholes because it's a lot easier for my strategy of just going to each star uh, ship appearance again just entirely uh, aesthetic again if you notice that I chose red on my flag and then my ships are red then my ship choices are red I'm gonna do avian because that's kind of what the theme I've been going with except for my main dude Next, okay, here we go. We're gonna save them and we're gonna hit done. All right, guys, that's all I have time for. So, um, unfortunately, I just realized I'd made a mistake when I was building my uh, empire, and I didn't want to completely scrap the first episode because a lot of it I felt was really good and detailed. So, um, I will be making a, a short, a really, really small change to my empire because I didn't realize until I was on the third episode that I basically just screwed myself over by picking pacifist trait during the gov in the government. So if I um, load it, uh, just go to uh, this Titan Corporation and go to my government ethics. I chose pac pacifist, which is really not what I meant to pick. I actually meant to pick a xenophile, or was it xenophile? I, the point is I, I picked pacifist when I really wasn't supposed to because basically what it meant was I wasn't allowed to use unrestrictive wars and that really sucked because in my game I couldn't really expand that far and the only person I could expand towards was this guy who I would have had to kill or fight to to um, fight to actually like expand which really sucks so um, and unfortunately I couldn't because I was pacifist which means I cannot use unrestricted wars which basically means I can't just go fight anybody I have to have like a purpose for it which is uh, not really my game style unfortunately uh, I don't know like which one I usually pick but yeah so what do I usually pick xenophile yeah okay yeah pretty much so you know I uh, unfortunately screwed up a little bit there, and I will be uh, fixing this right now. I'm actually going to go back to the um, the Xenophile because that gives me some nice buffs for it. Uh, trust growth and diplomatic influence, which is pretty nice, meaning I can, uh, you know, 
increase my opinion of people and more likely to form federations and then of course my fanatic materials which increases my t research speed and decreases my maintenance cost or robots um, it might be interesting to militarist but I always hated their factions and factions I'll get later into the next episode probably or whenever they re become relevant I guess I usually say okay sorry thank you all for watching I'll see you guys in the next episode where I'll basically be um, explaining uh, the UI and uh, of the in-game stuff and I'll actually be creating it all over again. Again, 